Hey guys, The Chicken is here. We're back today with another home gym video. In today's video, guys, I'm gonna go over the benefits of uh, and how to change your squat rack into a half rack. So this is something I've talked about a little bit in the past on how to do this. So I'm gonna go over that. Then I wanna talk about just the benefits of having a half rack over a squat stand, um, why you might wanna consider doing it too. So this is all from Rogue. This is the one of the, their more popular squat stands, the Rogue SML1. So what a lot of people don't know is you can get a um, you can get the half rack attachment on the SML one, but you can do it with a 70 inch clearance. So all you have to do is whenever is uh, obviously you have to have the, uh, the SML one squat stand first. But most people they see the HR two attachment and they see that it has I think it's 90 inch posts that it comes with because the idea is to have like a pull up bar and stuff on the back of it, which I still do. Um, but if you go into, when you purchase it, <clears throat> you can select the HR2 attachment, the post size, you can change that to 70 inches on your checkout. So then you can get a half rack that's all the same size and it's a much smaller space and it'll fit in your basement better. It'll fit in, you know, whatever space you want to do it in. Now, if I had the option of doing both, I would go with the taller um, rack post because that's going to allow you to do pull-ups a lot easier. This works in a pinch. Um, and I would still get the pull-up bar to uh, make it more firm, makes it a little bit more sturdy. Uh, I'll shake it in a minute to show you, but <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I would go with that anyways. But if I had the if I had the choice, if I had the option, I would definitely go with the higher one to allow you to pull ups a little bit better. But um, let's talk about some of the benefits of this. So why would you want to go from a squat stand to a half rack? So as you can see, I'll bring this back a little bit. I've got a ton of stuff on here, right? So. <clears throat> My number one primary benefit of having a uh, an open half rack opposed to a squat stand is just storage. I can keep so much stuff on here. You see, I've got my old J cups turned around and that can hold my belt, it can hold bands, it can hold chains, it can hold whatever. Um, but the biggest thing is having the plate storage. So the plate storage does two things for you. Number one, obviously it's gonna organize your plates, make them very easy to load up on the bar when you're squatting or benching or deadlifting or whatever you're doing inside the rack. Um, and it's nice because they're right there and you can just simply put them on a go. You don't have to buy, you know, um, <clears throat> a plate tree or worry about putting them somewhere else. It's very easy and it's honestly very cheap and affordable. Um, like if you look at buying a standalone plate tree versus just buying the pegs to throw them on your rack, this is the way to do it. Um, so there's that. And um, yeah, it's just easy to keep everything here. It's nice. You can just throw the stuff. Uh, right on kind of as you go um, and it keeps it more organized keeps it all in one spot gets it up off the floor um, now obviously you know for the barbells I do eventually want to get uh, barbell storage at, uh, at some point but what you can do is you can get stuff for um, you know you can throw it on the J-cups in the back but that gets kind of annoying because then it's in the way and you gotta you know pull it out pull it back in it's kind of a pain um, but yeah it just you know you have more space to work with you can do more things with it um i've been able to add different attachments to this as well so i've been able to put the you know just staying with rogue to keep it easy the rogue matador i was able to put on this and again it's a little bit awkward but it still works so you can add your attachments to this type of setup whereas with a squat stand you're kind of picking one thing like if you're going to add attachments to it you can't have plate storage necessarily um if you're going to bench out of it you can't really have plate storage again um, because the plates just kind of get in the way when you're benching, unless you want to bench like at the very end of it. And it's just, I don't know, it's not really ideal. So adding in the pull-up bar in the very back, if you do have the space to do pull-ups, I mean, it does work and it certainly makes it, you know, very sturdy. You can see with all the plates, there's a little bit of sway, but it's not too bad. Um, and yeah, so the, there's different things you can do with it, depending on what you want to do. Say, for example, if you didn't want to have the, uh, the weight plates, on the side. You could actually bench inside of this area here. So this is 17 inches across from this side right there. So you could, you know, theoretically pull up a bench and have it inside this little cage area. You definitely couldn't squat or anything like that inside of it, but you know, that would be an option um, for sure. But for me, I like having a half rack because it just gives you more space to work with. I hated, at the old gym I was at, we had the, um, <clears throat> it was like the RML 90 or something like that, whatever the mainstay uh, Rogue full rack is. And there was lots of times where, you know, I would walk a squat out and 
I don't know if this was just a me thing, or maybe you guys let me know in the comments if it happened to you before, but there are just so many times I'd walk a squat out and clang, I'd smack one of the plates uh, off the side of the bar and it would just throw off the whole set. This one, I mean, you can come loose, you can obviously, you got all the space in the world, so. It's just nice, I've always liked that. It's one less thing to have to worry about when you're squatting, right? Um, I don't think it would really bother you during anything else, but you know, I like to have that, the, the room to move. You know, if you're gonna fall over, at least you can just dump the plates and not have to worry about it too, right? Um, so yeah, those are some of the main benefits. Um, some of the things I added to this was, <clears throat> like I talked about the J-Cups, I found that the initial J-Cups that came with um, that came that come with the squat stand. I didn't really like these because, as you can see here, um, you can see that the metal acts the shoot from the bar acts they choose into the steel of the um, of the J cups. For some reason, they didn't put the um, the UHMW plastic on that outside there where the bar actually touches the steel, which is kind of strange. But um, yeah, so upgrading to the sandwich cups that was an easy one. Um, definitely something I'd recommend for you guys if you want to do this build as well. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> we'll figure that out later. So yeah, um, that's the biggest thing: is the openness, the extra storage, the ability to add on attachments, uh, that kind of thing. So if you guys are thinking about going this route, I have had this setup for you know close to I don't know three, almost four years now, and I've never had a problem with it. There's never been. I mean, there's really never been anything that I went to do in here and been like, ah, oh, like if only I had, you know, more space or, you know, just did something differently. It's never really had a negative impact on my training at all. Um, the one thing is just, you know, the pull-up bar is not ideal because it goes right like into the floor. It's kind of awkward, but that's more like my space problem than how it works on the rack problem. Um, <clears throat> now, in terms of the setup, it really wasn't that bad. Putting this together, you know, it, it all bolts together. Um, so, I mean, once you have the squat stand set up, it wasn't that bad to put the HR2 thing on top of that. It actually fits in like pretty well. Um, I mean, it's all just the, it's all just those bolts and it, I, I don't remember having any problems with it really. I think I had to move some of the, um, some of the posts around, but yeah, for the most part, it went together pretty nice, so that wasn't a big barrier. That wasn't a big barrier uh, either. Yeah, after having some of this equipment and, like, setting it up and stuff, now that's definitely something that I think about. It's like, oh, my God, like, you know, like, how hard is this going to be to put together? Funny enough, I think the, the most difficult uh, thing that I put together was the, the curl tricep um, little plate-loaded machine that I have here, which is funny because it's probably the smallest thing in here, but... Is for whatever reason, it was such a pain to set up. That and the belt squat, that was a piece, but I mean, that was a big piece of equipment too, so. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions about this, you can let me know down below in the comments. I always get comments on the squat rack to half rack, so I try to just do a video touching base on it every now and then, how I'm liking it, how I'm not liking it, that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, SML1 with the HR2 attachment 70 inch post. You guys let me know what you think of that down below in the comment section. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. That is going to wrap it up for the video today. Make sure to leave a like if you found it interesting, entertaining, or affordable. Catch the next one, guys. Check it out. Bye-bye.